Well, hello there, Kansas City. Stephen St. John here with another episode of Hot Mike with SSJ. So for the people that have been showing up in my Facebook comments when I post uh, pictures from my vacation, asking me when another episode of Hot Mike is uh, going to arrive, here you are. This is for you. All right? Now enjoy my vacation pictures. Stop asking me when another episode of Hot Mike's coming. I'm just kidding. I love it. Uh, this is going to be a good one because if you listen to uh, New Day with SSJ, formerly the Border Patrol, you know that one of our most popular segments, and most importantly, the most popular segment, the favorite segment of Selena St. John is uh, Thursdays at 8 a.m. when we have Gary Dieter and Anthony Sherman in studio. She likes when they fight. She likes when they argue. We'll see if she likes it when it's just Gary solo. Uh, because today we have Gary Dieter as a guest on Hot Mike with SSJ. He, um, I was concerned about how he was going to react when he found out that uh, Sherm was a solo guest. Uh, and I, 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 how, how, how did you react when you found uh, that out? Kind of caught off guard, you know. Right. I mean, I was, I was, I was the OG on the on the border patrol, right. and then you were first. I walk into the car one day. I'm like, sure. And what do you, what do you got going on after this? He hits me with the, what's going on Steven's podcast. I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right, see ya. And I just drove off. I'm like, this fucker yeah. going before me. Like this that's kind of motherfucker. That's kind of messed up, man. See, but how how good is it if you can cuss? You always want to no, cuss on the show. Good. It, Cut it, it loose. It's almost more fun when you're you cuss and you're not allowed to cuss yeah. than just. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see it's how they. Fun, we'll though. see how they flow out today. Um, but the plan was, you know, I wanted to have you on. I didn't want to have you on together. I want to have you, you know, separate yeah. you. All right, divide and conquer. That's right. And so let's uh, let's get into this. Let's start this. Let's let's a little bit of your origin story for people, because I forget sometimes. You know, when we talk about you know, who you are and where you came from, uh, people didn't hear it when you first came on the show. So let's start. Okay, where are you from? I am from South Bend, Indiana. Home of the Irish. Home of the Irish. Okay. And so uh, your dad has sent me some uh, interesting DMs over the years. Tell yeah. me about your dad. Yeah, he's a uh, retired police officer of 39 years. Runs his own security business now, but uh, very prideful in his kids. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, like I said, super prideful in whatever we do. And uh felt like me especially was kind of sports going my way uh throughout my career he was he was right there along the whole way uh kind of our coach growing up and the the father fi figure that we looked at to learn how to work hard and kind of learn what that looks like uh somebody that supports his family uh no matter what and uh yeah I mean he's like I said prideful I mean as you guys could probably tell just the way he dms and listens to every show and it's like that he stuff. can still whip someone's ass quick yeah yeah I mean he stays he, that's kind of where we got our work ethic when it comes to lifting weights and uh just doing athletic things he's like the he's like the dad that has all the every single sport in the back of the truck ready to go whenever so um was he a disciplinarian we were all good kids, so uh, we Wait a minute. didn't you were really. A good kid? Yeah, everybody was great. We had uh, how many siblings are you talking about here? Uh, two brothers, older one, older one, younger. Um, we were, we were, I mean, we were the family that we had kids at our house, so we never really had issues like going to parties or anything. But um, as as much as, yeah, we never got in trouble. Like we were, we were all good kids. We just we love playing sports. We love hanging out with each other. So. We had one friend. Uh, we kind of, like, went in stages. Like, I think my, I don't know, 12-year-old friend was, like, our friend for, like, three years. And then high school hit, and we had our, like, buddy that's, like, our basically all of our brother's best friend growing up uh, through high school. And he was at our house every day. So we had four four brothers and just playing sports. What about mom? Mom was a uh, – she was a college basketball player. Oh, really? Yeah. Where'd she play at? Wisconsin-Milwaukee. What position? question i would guess uh Any good questions your mother probably power four if i had to guess 511 why, why do you have to guess you haven't asked her about her playing days or what no i don't think so why not i don't know how's this never come <laughs> up i have no idea it's your mom yeah i know uh i would guess yeah power four she grew up in wisconsin you ever play against your mom uh no oh uh, i mean shot around but she's got bad knees oh yeah basketball knees man. okay she's basketball knees not good for you so, she, I mean, you can't tell me if she was a scorer, she's a defensive specialist, rebounder, or nothing about your mom. 
playing basketball in college. I didn't even know this. No. I mean, I couldn't tell you what my dad was good at. I mean, I know he was, like, a good skater. So I don't understand. Why don't you know anything about your mother's basketball career? This is bothering me. It's not just – I mean, I don't know anything about my dad's, like, high school career or anything. What did he play? Played uh, baseball, and I think that was it. Just a baseball guy. But, I I mean, your your mom was a – collegiate athlete yeah a baller yeah i think that's where we get our uh size I th- we definitely get our size from our mom how tall is she she's five ten five eleven right. and my dad's like five eleven we get our like uh i'd say like physical strength from our dad and speed from our dad so but your your brothers how how my older brother Are they good is, athletes? Yeah, yeah. Great athletes? Uh, better athletes than you? No, no, no. Not better than me. But, uh, Maybe? My, no. My older brother was pretty solid. Um, what? He was a quarterback, left-handed, runner. Runner could throw it. Good enough to go to next level, college? Uh, we played together at Bowling Green. Oh, really? Um, he See, went, I don't know any of this stuff. Give me he, this information. He walked on at IU, and then when I transferred to Bowling Green, he transferred to, uh, walked on, and – was a backup quarterback. So he, I mean, you could make the argument he was a better athlete than you. He's a quarterback. I mean, no, he's not a better athlete. No? But no. running quarterback. No, no, he's not a better athlete. Close? No, I don't think it's close. But right. he's a good athlete. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's That's he's a good brother. athlete. Younger brother was. So my dad grew up like very short until his like, I think he was like a senior in high school or something like that, and. uh that's what happened to my little brother. He was like 5'2", five, 5'3", five, up right. until like senior year. And sprouted. Running around 5'2", five, 5'3", five, as a junior, and then all of a sudden, yeah. boom. Yeah, he played like nose tackle, all in Pop Warner, like the smallest kid. And then he was a uh, golfer in high school. Just he was too small to play football, so golfed. And then hit a growth spurt like senior year. He's like 5'10". now. So so, so, but he became a – what was his sport, best sport? though? He's a golfer. Okay. What do they do now? They're both in Cleveland, actually. They both work for uh, CDW. They're both doing sales jobs. You like your brothers? Yeah, yeah. You ever fight with your brothers? Uh, I mean, you like? I mean, because I'm asking this, you seem to you you want to fight everyone or yeah. challenge everyone. Uh, you, you say you're the best athlete, or are you the toughest of the of the three brothers? Yeah, I, I would say I am. Yeah. I would say I am. You would say you are. Or is yeah, this, no, is I this definitely. Played out no, or? I am. I am. My like the younger brother is like the most uh, personable. Like right. can fill up a room. Older brother, same way. Well, I feel like I'm the most reserved. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I believe you when you say that. Ah, it's true. It's okay, true. Okay. So then, what high school did you go to? South Bend, Washington. And you put up big numbers there. Yeah, big to, numbers to the baby. point you've retired. They retired your number. Yep. You and Skylar Diggins, huge basketball star. Yeah, yeah. How how how? She was a uh, she was a senior. I was a freshman. Okay. Um, so I actually transferred high schools halfway through my freshman year. Played varsity at one school my freshman year. Why did you transfer? Uh, we had some like weird coaching deal going on. Like the coach was like a scam artist, basically. And well, wait a minute, like, hold lied on. Lied about his whole like career and like got there and. Really, he was. I think he was like a. He was the decent coach from what I remember, but then he like everything. Yeah, like said his wife had cancer, like all this like crazy stuff, and then like just ghosted. Nobody knew knew where he went. So you transferred. Transferred to my uh, to South Bend, Washington. Their head coach was a police officer, friend of my parents. Um, different different school. Uh, we got there about halfway through the year, so basketball season, and you saw how much uh, just influence that Skyler had on just the community and program itself. Like they were selling out standing room only in the gym, uh, filling up every single game. So went to a few of those, saw the impacts she made. And I think she was a motivation for a lot of athletes coming out of Washington, just to kind of see how somebody uh, working hard and having success, how well they can do kind of after, after they uh, get out of high school. You ever talk to her after the high school days? Uh, Just, I mean, nothing crazy here and there. That she saw you, would she know you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went up to her. She said, "Hey, yeah, her, hey, Gary. yeah, her husband. Uh, his his name's or her, yeah, his name. His name's Daniel Smith. He was like a top uh, top receiver in the area. Okay. So my freshman year, I clamped him up. Uh, he was like, was had, he a better receiver than you in the area? 
No, no, definitely. I mean, he went to Notre Dame. He had a scholarship Notre Dame. He was super athletic, like 6'4", like 210 in high school. Had like a 40-inch vert. Very athletic guy, but I clamped him up my freshman year, clamped him up sophomore year. And then uh, he went to Notre Dame. And I stayed in contact with him, just trying to learn from him, receiver stuff. When I, I mean, started, I I think I I only started playing receiver my uh, sophomore year of high school. That was like the first official year playing. Uh, receiver. You could have been a good defensive player then, it sounds like. Yeah, I think I could have played, like, a good uh, – I don't know. I feel like I could uh, be a pretty good safety. Why would you switch? Uh, I just like offense. I'm an offensive okay. guy, man. All right. And so uh, uh, your your name's Gehrig, by the way. Right. And you're named after Lou Gehrig. Yeah, go Yanks. And so the Yanks, are, that's from your dad? or is Yeah, it my dad. Than that, nah, my dad. It? Dad grew up a huge Yankees fan. Uh, he loves. Where did he grow up at? He was born in Cleveland, and then grew up in South Bend. So then, how come he it was Yanks over over the Indians? Uh, I don't know, but I would just guess the Yankees were better at the time. He's and, got no love for the Cleveland Guardians. It's all Yankees. Uh, he, I don't know. He'd probably say that's his second team if he had okay. to pick one. But I mean, we grew up with a Yankee room in our house, like pinstripes on the walls, like signed balls around the whole up. Like facade area, like hardcore stuff. Yeah, whole Yankee room. Are you prepared for their collapse this season? I mean, they're playing. I mean, they already had their their shit six weeks. So, I mean, Jazz Chisholm's gone though, buddy. I'm not worried about that. You've got to be worried about that. He brought the juice. He was the guy that was going to take you to the next level. Now UCL, IL. Who knows if he comes back? But if he does, how can he be the same? That's not our issue. I think the issue was the bullpen. So as long as the bullpen doesn't suck, which half the time they do. Uh, like last night against the worst team in the league, bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth inning, heart attack, um, got out of it. But it's like, it's Aaron Boone can't manage, man. Nice. It's, like you got Grady Sizemore, first game of uh, his man- managerial career, going against Aaron Boone, and he puts up 18 hits on the Yankees. You've had it with Aaron Boone, is what you're saying. Yeah, I've said it plenty of times. I mean, a guy that's uh, – I mean, it's like I just don't get how he still has a job with the Yanks. Like, the Yankees are, I would say, what the Chiefs are now in my mind. It's like their expectation level, Super Bowl or bust. And the Yankees is the same thing. Like, you got the best few players in baseball. The Yankees can't make the Super Bowl, Gary. Okay, Steven. I'm just letting you know. So, you got, you got the best few players, best uh, expectations in baseball. It's World Series or bust every year. And even now, it's every year, bro. It's it's the Yankees. But that's it's not the same. I mean, even I mean, now? Look, look at the betting odds. It's like they're one or two right. or three, one. I'd say top three every year. Like You're my friend, I don't want you to be disappointed. So I think expectation level when it's that high and you fail every year, uh, and nothing changes and the same shit happens year out, year in, year out. Like I watch all the games and it's all the same shit every single year. It's like you're just like you just said. There's gonna be a Collapse, they'll make the playoffs, and then they'll suck. He'll get beat against a team with just a better manager. Cleveland. I want say they're not going to lose to Cleveland. I would say like Houston is a Houston's a threat. I don't think Baltimore has it. I think it's going to be Yanks, Astros, and the. What do you think lost to the Royals in the playoffs? Uh, the Royals aren't making it. I'm. I'm it's just a telling, hypothetical. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, how I, painful would it be if they lost to the Royals? It wouldn't happen, but if uh, if I would be at every game. Why, full Yankees uniform. What the question? Asking, They're not going to lose because the Royals aren't making the playoffs. I said this MVP? like, I, I no. I, I think I made a bet with one of my buddies like a month ago, two months ago. I was like, because I think the Royals were in second place, maybe right there when they were hot. I told him, I'm like, buddy, like they're not. People accuse you online of not paying bets. I don't know why because I pay the bets. It's like the the one between me and Sherm has not expired. Like he, nobody said it has to be this summer. Nobody said anything. I'll do it eventually. We'll get to that. So the uh, yeah no the Royals. I said they're gonna finish in third. I just don't I think they have enough juice. Like yeah. Bobby Wood's great, but one player only gets you so far. Hence the Yankees the last few years. All right, so let's get back to you. Um, did you grow up wanting to go to Notre Dame since you're in South Bend? I was a Wisconsin fan. My mom's from really? Madison. Okay. So you're you're a Wisconsin fan, so you didn't want to go to Notre Dame, even if you could have. Right. You wanted to go to Wisconsin. Yeah. So then when did you figure out that you were good enough to play in college? When was that kind of realized? Uh, I would say, like, going after sophomore year, I uh, had a pretty good season. 
thousand yards, whatever, and then like s- like would do the uh, travel seven on seven stuff, and was having success against basically anybody I went against, and would go to like all those camps, like Ohio State, Wisconsin, kind of all the Midwest schools, like the one day camps, and always performed at a high level. And I don't know, I've always been a confident guy when it comes to anything really athletic. So. That's- uh, you know, when you play receiver, uh, especially as a white guy, you got to be confident. So um, my confidence was always high, and I felt like I always performed wherever I was. And then I think going into uh, – I got my first scholarship at a Bowling Green camp, and then, like, all the Mac schools kind of rolled in with scholarships. And then my – I think after my junior year, it was really when I started kind of really going off at, like, all the camps. Went to Wisconsin one-day camp, like, went off – uh, they told me that they were going to offer me, and then, like, I was ready to, like, drive up there, commit, and then they, like, called and were, like, basically no offer. I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, what, why? I have no idea. I don't know. But I was – you, So, like, were you, like, heartbroken or pissed off? Uh, or both? Probably a little bit of both. Yeah, that was, like, the – And they said, they, they said, like, <clears throat> no, no offer, period, or no offer at this time? I can't remember. I just remember that they were like, yeah, we're not, we don't have a uh, scholarship for you right now. Did they Some, say, hey, come and walk on? Yeah, I wasn't going to do that, but I can't remember. I mean, after they said that, I was like. You tuned them out. Yeah, kind of pissed. And so, so then who were the offers that you were considering? <sighs> took a visit to KU um, and then S- who <clears throat> did S- you? SMU. I never heard about this. So when Charlie Weiss was at Notre Dame, uh, my dad knew him, and then he – I think I would have got a scholarship from Notre Dame if Charlie Weiss was still there. And then he ended up getting fired or whatever and then came to Kansas. I think that same day he called me, offered me, and I think I visited like the next few days. Um, no lies here. Yeah. Tell me about the visit. How did that go? It was good. Like I said, I was a, I was an easygoing guy. Like I wasn't a party or anything. So but I they just, were god awful. Did that matter to you? No, not really. I mean, I – you saw it like Charlie Weiss is a good coach, obviously coming from the Patriots, going to Notre Dame. Um, did you like Charlie? Yeah, yeah, I did. And then his son was my age. We played against him in like seven on seven. He wasn't like a great athlete, but great guy. Uh, Charlie Weiss Jr. Yeah, he went to St. Pius for a year. Did he? Yes, he did as a wide receiver. Yeah, now he's a rising star in the coaching ranks. Yeah, I was gonna say he's a he's a great coach. He was actually at Bama uh, when I was at Bama as a analyst or something like that but like as a I don't know how old I mean he's my age so he's probably 22 like leading an offensive meeting on some days so did you meet Tim Grunhard when you went to your visit uh at, at KU he was on the staff at that point I don't think so no I really don't remember like really anybody I mean I remember I met one of my guys that his name is Bryce Butler he was transferring from USC and he came and visited Kansas same time um uh, and we just – I don't know why we it kicked off with me and him, but we were kind of buddies there and then just stayed in touch after like 10 years. Never saw each other, and then we played in a, a pickleball tournament last year together. And so you said – when did you say no to Kansas? When did you decide? To- well, I was already uh, – so that happened in like late December, I don't know, 2011 or something like that, and I was enrolling at SMU like the next month or like the next few weeks, so – I had it in my mind that I wanted to go to SMU already. The uh, receiver coach was from South Bend. Um, his dad still lived in South Bend, so, like, it just felt like family to me because he would be there. The coach would be there so often and just would obviously come and visit and talk me up and do all that, butter me up, basically. So then how long were you at SMU? Uh, I guess nine months. And why did you leave there? Coach was a dickhead, the new coach. Who was that? Um, Let's get some names out there. Man, you got to remember something. Yeah, no, his name was Jason Phillips. Okay. Um, so you say, like, give me an example of Jason Phillips being a dickhead. Yeah, I mean, so Jeff Reinbull was the coach that recruited me, um, and then he went to the CFL, like, two weeks after I enrolled, so I was kind of thrown off by that. That sucks. Yeah, no, I was kind of pissed. And then uh, I had a meniscus, t- like, I tore my meniscus after my third game my senior year of high school, but then just played the rest of the year on it. And then, so when I went to SMU, I was already, uh, like, hurt, banged up or whatever. So I had to get surgery on the menis- meniscus, so rehabbing, all that. And then the season starts. Um, 
I would say I'm like a force, like a like the fourth receiver on the roster. Like I I was playing the first game. Like I played in almost in almost every game I was there, and then like halfway through, just like worked my way up into like the starting spot. And then I don't know, like he was. I thought he liked me, and then, like, I would ask, like, coming from high school, you don't watch film or really do much, like, scouting and, like, right. learn all that. So I, like, went up to his office and asked him, hey, coach, like, can you kind of show me how to how to watch film, what to look like, that type of conversation. He just basically screamed at me and told me get out. So then after that. Just because. Yeah, I don't know. And then. There's something not adding up there. I don't know. Like I said, I was a good kid, worked hard. You said, hey. Can you help me watch film? Yeah. He's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, all right, whatever. So after that, after that, I was just, I mean, like, I never had a coach that was like that. Like, I've always been like almost, I won't say buddy, buddy with coaches, but I loved having a good coach, like somebody that wanted to, wanted to get me better um, type of thing. And so after that, I just wasn't like loving football at SMU. So I was like, I, need to get out of here and thankfully bowling green was uh still interested in me so i transferred over to bg after the uh after the season let me see here skip the bowl skip the bowl game i need i need to, i need more information about this jason phillips he was a good i mean he was an all-american receiver at houston i believe um yeah and he got drafted in the 10th round of the nfl draft yeah smaller but, guy yeah five seven yeah yeah five seven one sixty six Guess where he is now? I have no idea. Colorado coach for Deion Sanders. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. He went from SMU to Kansas. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that. And so this guy was just a prick. Yeah, I didn't like him. Um, oh, he was a receiver for the run and shoot uh, Houston offense with Andre yeah, Ware quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so you just go up there. Yeah, I'm trying to dig in. I don't. This is this not making sense to me. No, I mean, like I like I said, I went up there, asked if I can, if he can show me how to watch film, and just got. How did he just like what? Like what? I mean, yeah. After that, I'm like, did he uh, cuss? Yeah. The fuck out of this. Yeah. And I thought, I mean, I thought he liked me, but did you follow up after that? Like maybe you caught him on a bad day. Or I don't something? know, man. I, I was a young kid, so I mean, maybe I was, maybe I took it the wrong way. But I'm like, fuck this. I don't want to be here. It didn't anymore. seem like you took it the wrong way. You started to get the fuck out of his office. Yeah, no. I, like I said, I don't want to. Shoot. You weren't asking like, "Hey, can I mispractice or something?" Hey, can I walk? No, can I, was, I get better, coach? Yeah, like you. I, yeah. No, I was like, I was a grinder. Like, I was. Did you call your dad and say, "Look." Yeah, I told my dad, parents. I don't know what's going on with yeah. this guy. No, I, I don't think I called him, but I told him. I think we played uh, Tulane down in New Orleans. My parents mm-hmm. came, and after that game, I told them after I was like, "I don't want to be here anymore." So was your dad like tough it out or like, "I get it, son. Let's let's go." No, I mean else. like I wouldn't say that for no reason. So. Right. uh he trusted you. Yeah, they were they were supportive of it, and then that was back when transferring was hard. So you had to fucking like write letters to the NCA asking to get approved and all this. You have good grades. No, so yeah. like when I went to SMU, uh, I enrolled early, so they stuck me in all these like junior senior level classes, buddy. I fucking <laughs> damn near flunked out of school. Like that shit was hard. I'm in like the hardest class you can think: anthropology, fucking. Why are you in anthropology? Is it was the math? Well, there's some. What are you fucking doing here? Some other. I don't even remember the names, but listen, like when I say it was SMU hard, SMU has a long history. It's a great school of, of, of also of corruption. You're telling me they're fucking taking a young wide receiver and putting him in fucking anthropology? Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. Like you guys got to stick me in some nice simple yeah, math. That's or what I'm saying. Aren't they trying to get reading your GPA classes? Up? Like just make it easy on me. But Ooh, no, I don't. Them. It was tough, so I had to really grind out the like last like month of the year because I had to like basically ace all my finals. So I did grind it out, got it figured out, transferred. Like I said, that was when you had to send shit to the NCA compliance to try to get approved so you can play the next year. Got denied. Like, what did you say? Like, uh, I'd like to transfer because my coach is a dickhead. No, you say that. No, like, I think. You, like? Well, so my grandpa was an older guy. Okay, uh, so transferring closer to home so they could come to games and blah 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 so that's the like NCAA a, said no yeah they said no so uh transferred had to sit out but redshirted so i guess it didn't hurt too much uh so just grinded the whole year in bowling green yeah that shit was a grind because i was like coming from texas it was fucking cold again like the first day of spring ball was like 20 degrees and it's bowling green like they don't have like a bunch of gear that they give out so i'm wearing fucking shorts and like a Thin long sleeve shirt. Can't even give you pants. 
No, no pants, fucking socks with holes in them. And then you go to practice. Like, I think I jammed, like, two fingers. And, like, I'm so cold by the end of practice. I go in the hot tub afterwards, and, like, I'm still freezing for an hour straight. You so. know that right now, Sherm's listening to this and thinking, this pussy. Right? No, he Talk to Sherm right now. If he's no, out there he, listening, Sherm, he's Sherm, judging you right no, now. No, no, Sherm understands. Does like, he? When you go to, like, a smaller school, like, you don't, you don't have all the, the bells and whistles. Like, you don't have fucking ge- fresh gear to go. Right training room or go to the equipment room and ask for hey can i get a can i get a sweatshirt because it's fucking cold out today can i get a hand warmer nah buddy like here's a long sleeve shirt and some but you got a good coach there. uh yeah dave clausen was there first okay. uh he's a great yeah great coach knows how to rebuild a program and culture i think culture is his biggest key can't get fucking socks though can he no i mean yeah. i i can't blame him on that right. it's, it's bowling green man um and then he left to take the job at wake Wake Forest, and then they brought in Dino Babers, which nobody really knew anything about Dino when That's he came. That's a good offensive coach there, right? Yeah, great offensive coach. Came from uh, Eastern Illinois. So once you kind of look up who he was, all the receivers were pretty excited about it and, um, yeah, started. And But when you, when you went up there and then Clawson, he was like, oh, fuck, here we go again. Now I'm, the guy I come to play, boys leaving. leaving. Uh, yeah, kind of. I was kind of pissed, um, but it's – once you uh, experience it one time, it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So, so then how long were you there? Three years. And so now Sherm gives you a lot of shit because you transferred. Yeah. And now we find out you transferred in high school, too. Yeah, that, so one, that one doesn't really count. Uh, it does count, uh, but I'm just, you know, does Sherm know about that one? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going to tell you, he's taking notes right now, I bet. No. And so, you, so, so then three years, why did you transfer from Bowling Green? Um, Dino took the job at Syracuse. So Dino left. The new coach coming in was uh oh, what no. Jason Phillips was it? Hold on here. No, it was uh he was the running back coach at Texas Tech. Did um, you like him or no? Mike Jinx. Okay. Um I didn't mind him as a person, but his whole st- like I looked up who his staff was. It's all these young, like G- first year GA guys that are gonna be position coaches. I'm out of here. I just didn't want to spend my scene like my quarterback left, my brother left. I was graduating. Meg, my wife was graduating, so it was like we Oh, didn't, so you met Meg at Bowling Green? Yeah, so we didn't necessarily need to be uh be there. So I'm like I had some interest in the transfer stuff, one from Dino going to Syracuse. So looked into Syracuse. The uh athletic director from BG was a good buddy of mine, I thought, and kind of made it tough for me to to kind of look into transferring into Syracuse. So that one kind of fell off the list. And then Bama came about, and then Wake Forest came about with Clawson again. So uh, took a visit down to Wake. Uh, you got some options. Yeah, Wake was really cool, like beautiful spot, beautiful part of the country. You're coming off 94 catches, 1,033 yards, yeah. 10 touchdowns. Yeah. Playmaker. Yeah, and we, I mean, we had a great offense. Like our quarterback was awesome. Uh, Roger Lewis was another receiver on the outside, was really good. He was he got drafted by the Giants. Who's recruiting you from Alabama? Uh, it was uh, Billy Napier. Okay. So uh, went there. Um, obviously, once you go there, it's kind of you're locked in. So it was cool. I mean, it was Nick Saban, B- Billy, and not really Kiffin too much that I remember, but mostly Billy Napier, which is fine. Like, that's who I was right. going to deal with on a daily ba- basis. So. They had Richard Mullaney the uh, year before, white guy, transfer from Oregon State. Had success, made a lot of plays, so I'm like, I can just come in and fill that role. So, so Take me back to so you, your wife, Meg. Yeah. How did you meet her? Uh, so, that second year. I think going into that. No, I think I was redshirted. Yeah, it was like that redshirt summer or something like that. I don't know. I found her on Twitter. Hit her at what do you DMs. mean you found her on Twitter? Some, like, Bowling Green tweet, like, I'm just, like, going through, just scouting it out, just found her, hit it. What, what the hell are you talking just about? Just DM'd her. I'm not going to get into the details, Steve. I'd like I don't a few get, details. give away my secrets, but. You don't need those secrets anymore. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so you're just on Twitter. Yeah. Looking at Bowling Green tweets or what? I don't know. I think Bowling Green tweeted something, so I'm just kind of looking to see, like, who retweeted. I don't know. I can't remember what it was called back then, but maybe retweeted. Like it gives you like the list, like welcome. Did she know this story? Yeah, I mean, shit. That's how it happened. But I mean, so. you're you were lurking. 
Yeah, I mean, at the time, yeah, I was looking and found the one. So then you found her. Yeah. And you're thinking, well. Yeah, DM'd her. uh, And then. You slid in her DMs. Yeah. Didn't. She was at home for the whole summer. So I think we talked for like two months before we even met. What was the opening? I mean, how do you, like, what was the opening line that that caught her? I think I said, like, do you go to BG or something like that? Oh, yeah. Then you just work your way in. Hey, I play football. Yeah. I think my profile pic was uh, like my jersey rolled up, ab showing, all that. I'd been, uh, so then how quick uh, did you know that this is, this, uh, is my, this is my wife? Yeah, no, pretty quick. I think probably the first time we met after, I guess it would be like after like three months of talking. Was Jeez. it feeling mutual? Yeah, yeah. Met, we lived in the same like apartment, uh, like complex, I guess. And then, yeah, just hit it off. And that was it? Yeah, yep. That was it. Now three kids later, 10 years later. 11 years later. You have no idea when you got married, do you? Five years ago. Yeah. It's on your Wikipedia page. Yeah, I'd say five years ago. Okay. If I had to guess. We have a four-year-old daughter, so one year before Three that. Three girls? Three girls, man. Girl dad. Hashtag girl dad. Big time. Big time girl Let's dad. Go. Yeah, Let's it's, go. It's fun. I enjoy right. it. Um, yeah, obviously. What about when you went to Alabama, though? Did that test the relationship? No. I mean, she like I said, she graduated, too, so we went down there together. And, oh, she did? Yeah. Roll season. Tide. Yeah, was there for a year, not even. What was it like playing? Like, I mean, that's the biggest time college football. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, you go down there. You, I mean, you kind of get humbled pretty quick because you're going against all the the best players. And I think in the summer they stick all the newcomers with the incoming freshmen. Um, so in the summer and stuff, I'm working with the freshmen, like going on like seven on seven without the coaches and stuff. But I mean, you quickly realize how athletic these kids are. Um, so you have to kind of just figure it out. Um, Best moment at Alabama? Uh, honestly, I'd probably say I had a lot of, like, fun, like, blocking moments, like pancaking guys. I enjoyed that. It was it was fun because we were – Favorite game? Like, what, give, me a, give me a game. Give me something. Probably the Washington game, playoff game. All right. That was a fun game okay. in, uh, in Atlanta, I think it was. I mean, it was just electric, but – I remember we had, I had like a Bo Scarborough broke like a he was on fire like the last like three games of the year and then I think he broke his leg in the national championship or something like that but he had like a long like seventy yard run and I came from like the opposite side of the formation blocked somebody like sixty yards downfield it was pretty hype. All right, so Alabama, you're done there. Yeah, you went to the combine. No, didn't get invited. Didn't, the, didn't get invited. Yeah. So just pro day workouts. Yeah, just trained for pro day, and then pro day at Bama is basically the combine. So right. took advantage of it. Uh, actually, had my quarterback from Bowling Green come out and throw because we didn't have a quarterback to throw for it. So he got to throw to our Darius Stewart, OJ Howard, and it was kind of showing for him too because he was still trying to make it at the time. So it was fun for him to come out there, um, throw get back in the swing of things. Yeah, we did that, met scouts and all that. You never really have a feeling. Like, your agent kind of tells you, like, you're probably not going to get drafted, but they're, you might get picked up late. And he's like, you'll, you'll be a priority free agent. So uh, the draft comes about. Um, that shit happened. Didn't get drafted. It's long days. You just, I mean, you see guys' names come across the board. And, I mean, I didn't have, like, a huge stat season at Bama, so, like, it wasn't a surprise to me. I think if I would have stayed at BG and put up another thousand yards, I might have got drafted. But uh, I think Bama prepared me more for the NFL than what would have been for their coming like into the Chiefs on like the roles I had to play. So, so how did you end up with Kansas City? Uh, I think it was like Kansas City. I think it was Green Bay. Um, I think Carolina, and I think there's one more team. I can't think of them, but. Uh, I just looked at, uh, just my agent sent me like the list of all the receivers on the rosters and I would just kind of went through it. And at the time, like that was after Tyreek's first year. So it was like Tyreek, Chris Conley, DeAnthony, D-Rob, um, Jeremy Macklin. And, J-Mac, baby. Yeah, J-Mac. M-I-Z, let's go. Stretch, um, trying to think of who else. Like a lot of guys that didn't necessarily have a big name outside of J Mac. So I was like, at the time, I'm like, let me just go here and try to compete with these guys. Um, and then it turns out like Tyreek's a Hall of Famer. 
J Mac was gone, but then so what year was this? So this was 2017. 17. And then so like Chris Conley, uh, the starters were Chris, uh, Tyree. But that was that was Mahomes' rookie year. Yeah. Okay, so you come in the same time as him. Yeah. So we came in the same time. Um, so it was those guys. If I had to go back, I probably would have picked like Green Bay. Like you probably want to go somewhere where the guys are older, learn from them for a year, and they'll be funneled out, and then you. Do so you in. regret picking Kansas City? I mean, somewhat. Not like. Not really, because my how my life turned out, but you wouldn't be on this podcast. Right? I know, yeah. no, but like if I had to go back, and um, I think I probably would have played in Green Bay versus here. So they're in Rodgers too. I mean, yeah, like a rod, like it was like Jordy's like last year, maybe. Yeah, his last year in Green Bay was 2017. Would you have done um, ayahuasca with uh, Aaron Rodgers? If you ask me, probably. You know, I mean, like out in the tent, like hey, yeah, go hang this. out we'll in the, a, would you, would, would in you the darkness, darkness retreat. Yeah, uh, would you have done something like that? That's your quarterback. Uh, like, hey, come on, we're gonna I don't find know. out about each other. I'm not like a, I'm not like a. I don't get peer pressured, so probably. But not. I mean, that's Aaron Rodgers. If you're an undrafted free agent, you're looking yeah, for playing time. I like, mean, you know, like I, I've told Pat no for not like things like that, but like I can say no to people and. What did you say fine. no to Patrick Mahomes? I mean, about? he would invite me to whatever something, and I just not out to a tent in the middle. No, of the not the wilderness or something, but like right. I had to turn down the Masters one year, uh, just like random that stuff like that. Daughter's first birthday. Okay, that's good. that's what's wrong. First that's daughter's, good. yeah, it was not good timing, but um, don't. So re- let's <clears throat> settle this now. Uh, I already know. Just don't no, even no, ask it. No, no, no. Anthony Sherman. Yeah. Says that Patrick Mahomes had a certain haircut. That's stupid. You saw. I'm just telling you what Sherman. I thought you'd be. Uh, I didn't think you'd ask this. I did think you'd ask it, but I thought. What did you're, you think I'd of, ask? What did you? Think I just I saw you're. Be- I thought you're better than that. Uh, Sherm yeah, no, Sherm. said that he had a haircut, and then you got his haircut. Yeah, no, that's, and you, that's great. You pushed that's, back. Yeah, no, that's great. No, listen, buddy. I had the haircut. Like, Talk I, to Sherm. He's listening. I know, and I've told Sherm. Sherm knows the story. Um, What's the story? I mean, I had the fucking haircut since, like, damn near senior year of high school. I so you walked with the into Chiefs camp with that haircut? Yeah. And did Mahomes have the same haircut? Buddy, I mean, just go or look at my fucking Instagram. Yours? And say, I like that haircut. I think he that. had it, but, I mean, I think I had it first. Like, I'm an older guy. Why does Sherm say that, then? Because Sherm sucks, buddy. Like, I, Sherm sucks, man. He's just a hard ass. He likes to mess with people. Uh, he's adamant about it. Because I've been asking him, I said, is that real? He's, oh, yeah, he, he he took his hair. No, shot. no, 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 no. Okay. He won't say that. What did you think I was getting ready to say? You, I know you're going to ask this. Yeah, I knew you were going to ask you that. You thought I was going to ask that? Yeah, I literally drove over here. I'm like, I already know he's going to ask that question. I think I was coming up the, esca- or the uh, elevator. There's no escalator here, buddy. I said, I'll I, tell you what. I, I fixed it. I didn't finish it. I right. said, esca- I would elevator. love to have an escalator here, but I just can't afford cool. it. Uh, but no, I mean, I knew so you were going to resist that. that idea. That's bullshit. It is. I mean, it's bull- like I've had the haircut for a long time. And sure, I'm had a mohawk for a while. Yeah, sure, mohawk. That thing sucks. What do you think of that? I mean, it fit him. Like, that was your prototypical, like, you think of a fullback in the NFL. That's kind of what you think of. How did you guys become such good friends? Because, honestly, when you look at, you, you look at your individuals, yeah. you may not think, oh, these guys are going to be really good friends. Yeah. How did that work out? Uh. I mean, Sherm's, like, one of those guys that gives, like, tough love, so, um, and I'm a guy that can take it, so. I was think, there a time you didn't like him? No. I mean, I, I understood, like, his kind of just way he went about things. Like, there was never a fuck this guy moment? No, no, no. He, uh, okay. he I think, the only, like, the biggest interaction I remember was, I think I was in the training room for something, and he basically told me, like, don't be in here. Like get out of here. So after that, fuck okay, out of here. Yeah, he's like, you're not gonna make it if you're gonna be in yeah. here. So, but you appreciated that. That's good advice. Yeah, and I and I listened. And um, what were you getting worked on? Do you remember? I'm pretty sure I had a fucking broken foot. Oh, but I mean, I'm not. Sh- you I'm did not it, you didn't. I'm not shitting you. I think it was broken. Um, but it just what you, why do you think it was broken? I mean, did you have I an could, X-ray? I could barely walk, buddy. I could barely walk. But did you foot. have an X-ray? No, because I didn't want to tell the trainers. So you. I told you. I you told you think guys. It's, it was a you have to hide foot, a bunch of injuries you when you're un- sure that it was a broken foot. Um, my uh, my uncle is a uh, podiatrist, so I think I he? went and saw him after the season, and uh, I think it was messed up pretty bad. But like, I'm a tough guy, so like, you I just can power through it. I mean, it was the same shit with my back. Like, I think I we'll get to the back in a minute. But yeah, we will. back to Sherm. No, he told me that, and then like. I mean, I sat with him at breakfast every day. Um, just kind of got to know each other after the season. And, like, the Sambo stories come about, like, me going against those guys on 
practice squad. You um, earned respect. Yeah, I mean, I practiced hard and I think went about things the right way. And like, if you didn't, sure wouldn't. Honest, sure wouldn't fuck with you. Yeah, no, you know? no, Sherm. Sure, yeah, exactly. If you do things the right way, and like I said, I'm a guy that enjoys like the shit talking to each other and right. messing around, joking. Uh, I understand like it's coming from a place of like you want to be friends with this guy, but you got to test the waters a little bit. Um, so I was, I'm all on board with that. Like I'm the same way today. I'm a dickhead until we're kind of buddies and then we kind of get to know each other a little more. And, and then you're still a dickhead. Still a dickhead, but like it's, it's all good fun. Way. It's all fun. Did you like it when he dressed up for training camp? Um, yeah, I mean, I thought we saw that was pretty funny. Like you don't really realize that your first year, but then. I don't think I realized it's second year. You this see, f- pick, I think my second fucking guy. Yeah, I think second year was the wrestling singlet, which yeah. was pretty funny. And then after that, you're like, okay, what's sure I'm going to do next year? Right. So you look forward to it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what is it that makes you think that you could defeat him in a cage match? Be honest. Uh, I think he's just a stiff guy. I mean, he's strong as shit. Like I don't. There's not a lot of people stronger than Sherman. Is there, it one but, of those things where you, you like if you could get through? Because you're a big MMA fan. Yeah. If you could get through the first round, maybe, then his tank's going to be empty. I just think I'd Your piece him up. Your athleticism takes over. You yeah, piece him up? I think I just would piece Footwork, him up. Footwork, just like what? Yeah. Just, Throwing hands, you piece him up? Yeah, I think just. What if he gets a hold of you? Then what do you do? <clears throat> like, I wrestle in middle school, so I feel I always feel comfortable with somebody like somebody him. getting on me. I mean, I got, took a, took out a uh, thing as a Marine. He's got you months ago. pinned up against the, the cage. I think I could, yeah. Ground. I think I could probably get to choke him out or something. So you you legitimately think you could beat him? Yeah, no, honestly. I Decision really, or stoppage? No. Or I tap think, out? I don't think Sherman will quit. He uh, won't quit. No, That's he exactly, wouldn't quit. That's the right answer. But He's never quitting. I think I'll give him that quick one-two, hit him with the hook, send him out the fucking ring. <laughs> wow. It's like guns and hoses. So do you, <laughs> See some of those like guys that go that flying out. out yeah, I'm all into that. Do you think the ref stops it? Uh yeah, I think he would save Sherm from himself because yeah, Sherm's not gonna quit. Right. I think right. I think you piece right. him up enough and I mean he's not like I said, he's not gonna quit, so he's gotta keep going. Right. Foot on the gas. So how did you become good friends with Mahomes? Um I think one quarterback receiver coming in at the same time. Uh I was like slated in as like a starter for the rookie minicamp. So obviously uh spent a lot of time there together and then I think I would I didn't have a car for the first like month or whatever so i just rode with him everywhere and then we just kind of kind of car we talk about here early pat's, on pat's car yeah early on i think it was a gtr okay i think he got a gtr from a dealership in texas that they were letting him drive and right. then uh so he was rolling right. yeah so then we just i mean hung out and kind of would do everything together because just riding together so i mean it's rookie mini camp so you're just doing football shit all the time but we would go play basketball or Go around town and try to find things to do. Can you beat him in anything? Don't lie. Uh, yeah. I mean, like what? I think anything. <laughs> like, what do you? Let well, I me mean, do. You get yeah basketball. It would be a really good game, but I think I get him. Baseball. I think I get him baseball. He's on the mound. You're in the batter's box. Yeah. Right now, I'm fucking taking his ass deep, dude. <laughs> that, I've been I've been this. fucking working my swing. If shit. somebody asked him that right now, would he agree with that? No, he, he, knows you he well. would say the exact opposite. But okay. listen, buddy, like I'm, ping pong. I'm competitive. I I used to smoke him and Kelsey and ping pong until I started playing pickleball. They could PS5. probably five. Oh, I'm smoking the video games. College football, twenty five. Yeah, it's like quarterbacks. He's don't, been playing that up at camp every night. Right I, now, he's 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 playing it every night. I think they paid him to say that. Well, he's, I asked him at the press conference. He said he had a big game against K State that night. No, nah, I think he's uh, Pat's like the type of guy. Like, yeah, he brought it out there, but. He's all business when he's up so there. So he's not so. playing. He probably played, like, the first, like, couple of days while the rookies were there. But no, I don't think he really played much outside of that. What if he fought Patrick Mahomes? I'm smoking him there. Really? Yeah. Street fight? Yeah. Cage fight? Yeah. Boxing? Uh-huh. Jiu-jitsu? Yeah. He's Across got no, the board. no stamina for that. This is going to get back to him? You know why? Bowling? Send it to bowling? Him. He could probably beat me. Bowling? I'm not. A, I've said that. Pickleball? Pickleball. I'm smoking any of those guys. Uh... Listen, man. I, that's why, I like, that's why I still work out. Like, just in case somebody wants to play me in some type of sport, I'm ready. Baseball, so, you name it. You mentioned your back. Yeah, and that's what led to your early retirement from the NFL. Uh, somewhat, not really. Well, tell me, like, what happened? 
Do you want the back or do you want the I want it all. Uh, this is this was the Gary Dieter podcast. Yeah, so after my second year, um, I played. That's when all the Kareem stuff happened. So then they cut him. I got brought up. Should uh, they have cut him? Uh, I mean, I don't think he should have lied. So were you, were you pissed off when they cut him? Yeah, he was a good buddy. I mean, it was me, him, and Pat. We kind of did everything together. And it, I played Kareem when he was at Toledo. I was at Bowling Green, big rivalry. And he always went off against us, um, vice versa. But, like, was it a case where, like, man, this pissing me off, but, man, he shouldn't have lied. You, you can kind of see it. Or? I mean, Coach uh, Coach Reed's got, like, two rules. It's, like, don't lie, don't steal. So, it's, like, you mess up one of those. Coach Reed kind of is Who would steal from Coach Reed? Not, like, from Coach Reed, oh, but, like, in the locker room. Don't steal from anyone. Yeah, don't steal. Has anyone stolen in the locker room? Uh, I think there was some shit my first year, but then. Oh, really? Uh, I don't really think after that. He's stealing the fucking locker room for it. No, well, whatever, that's fine. I have no idea. So, but uh, don't don't cross Coach Reed when it comes to those rules. He's yeah, he's got simple. I, I'm pretty sure it's just two rules: it's don't lie, don't steal. Um, so yeah, just maintain those two things, and Coach Reed will always give you a second chance if you mess something up. I mean, he's, I think you've seen that over the last few years with all the controversy uh, surrounding the Chiefs in the off seasons, but. Um, no, my second year, so when he left, I got brought up. I was basically Tyreek's backup, so I actually got in a good amount um, of playing time on offense. And you like Tyreek. You're good friends with Tyreek. Yeah, really good buddy. Um, and then, so going into the, the next year, was the Tyreek controversy in the offseason, and then... Now, you're uh, not a better athlete than Tyreek, though. I mean, that's you're not going to... I could beat him in sports. I'm not a better what do you mean athlete. Sports? Like, what sports? Uh, um, baseball, pickleball. I mean, I... Beat him damn near using my phone and pickleball, like as a paddle. Okay, well, uh, he could probably it, basketball would be a good game if we both play for real one on one. I'm a one on one basketball guy though. I'm not. I'm not, not a team a, guy. Not a team guy. Yeah. I need the ball in my hands. You're not passing the ball. I do in team, but like if I, I'm not like. But you don't want to. No, I'd rather just throw the ball up. Right. Okay. Second year. You're so up. second year, yeah. Tyreek's controversy. Uh, so OTAs and stuff. I'm starting in that spot, so I'm getting all the reps. Uh, with the ones, damn near all the reps with the two. So I'm just I'm flying around. And you're feeling good. You feel like okay, this no, is I'm, it. Yeah, I got this shit. Yeah, I'm making plays left and right, uh, doing everything right. Um, you're on the same page as your quarterback. Yeah, I'm. You got I, the offense yeah. down. Your confidence levels high. Yeah, confidence right. was high. Stepped up to the plate and just performed at a high level. And then they drafted McColl, worked McColl in, um, and then I, I I don't can't think of the one instance that. Hurt my back, but training from at once we bro- broke OTAs, training from like sometime end of June to August 1st or whenever camp was, uh, like something happened to my back, like it hurt. And then we got to training camp, uh, did the conditioning test, like passed it. And then my back was just like insanely tight. And then, and like, are you like, I mean, I felt in the it. back of your mind, I'm like, fuck, don't do this. Yeah, I'm don't like, yeah, no, I, you can feel it. I'm like, that's not good. So uh, I practice a few days, uh, not feel like it hurts pretty bad, not feeling good. And then, so, like, are you still at that point where, like, go back to the advice Shroom gave you? Get yeah. out of here. Don't you? Yeah, like, yeah, are you yeah. like, it's in your mind, like, I don't even want to fucking tell him. Yeah, no. And, like, that's what kind of hurts me down the road. I'll get to that at the end. But, yeah, I mean, when you're an undrafted guy and you have opportunity to play, you're not going to risk it to – Say, all right, my back's messed up. Let's get it looked at, and boom, I'm out. I'd Did rather you do any weird shit to to play or like to no. So take like a needle or anything like that. Or? So like two or three days go by in camp. I'm practicing, doing everything, but like I still feel it, it hurts. Um, and I think just I think I got jammed one time, and then just like started running, and just I was like, all right, I one I just didn't feel good like didn't feel right so I'm like I'm just gonna call it just told the trainers so what year is this this is 2019 I guess um so I think got the MRI had a bulging disc in my back um got a steroid shot so missed the rest of training camp and then cuts come about they kind of gave me the option like do you want to go on IR or do you want to take a settlement and try to come back so I being a prideful guy and whatever I'm competitive guy i'm like i'd rather do an injury settlement and work my way back so took injury settlement for i think three weeks and then you have to wait another three to be able to come back so why did you want to go on ir 
just com- I'm just a competitive guy. Like I don't want to sit out with an injury. So should you have gone on IR? Yeah, definitely. So come back uh, and like once you're once you take the settlement, you can't like go to the facility and do rehab or anything. So I'm just fucking rehabbing by myself, like trying to figure out what's going on. Um, I get to the point where I'm running fine. Uh, I mean, I felt like I couldn't bend down and touch my toes, but I'm running fast. And but did anyone ever see anything about surgery? Uh, they mentioned it, and that was kind of the IR deal. But I'm like, I don't want to do surgery. Like I've talked to a few people, and they mentioned if you don't have to do, if it's not, if you don't have to do it, don't do it. So I didn't do it. Uh, just kind of rehabbed it, try to strengthen the area around it, and then, like I said, got to the point where I was running routes at a pretty good level that I felt. I mean, I felt decent enough. Like I, like I said, I couldn't bend down, touch my toes. I'd be super sore after working out, but I. But you're on your own working out. Yeah, no, I felt like I could get by. So, uh, the six weeks is up. Um, I'm sending videos to all those guys. Like, hey, I'm ready. I can work do whatever so i get back on p squad uh come back and my i mean my back doesn't it wasn't 100 percent um so i'm probably like a 70 percent and that's not good for like a guy like me that needs to be 100 percent all the time so i'm just grinding just uh advil every day like whatever i can do to just ease the pain so just advil. i think it was at oh, tylenol yeah. or Advil. i don't know what it was pain medicine not like hardcore stuff you but you, just so did you think about doing the hardcore stuff or no because that then i like talked to the trainers like i didn't right. tell the trainers my back's still here like i'm like yeah i'm good whatever. icy hot they need to... no nothing worked it was nothing. it was bad oh i like, dude i went I, I went i did everything i could to not have back surgery and i wasn't trying to play football i was just trying to live my fucking life yeah no it was i mean it was not fun like that the rest of the season was just a grind like you're just trying to trying to get by um so i get brought up for a couple games and I think that was, I think that was, no, that's year before COVID. Was that year before COVID? I can't remember. Was that, no, so yeah, year before COVID. So um, Mexico game, played in that game, played in one more game after that. And then uh, I think I played in one more game. I ended up getting the credit season, but um, then missed the, uh, then playoffs came about, just was on P squad. Thought I was going to get called up for the Super Bowl, and then something crazy happened with some – I think it was Willie Gay's knee or somebody's knee, I think, like came went out of place like the last day of practice. So they had to bring up somebody else. So that was kind of disappointing. And then COVID year, uh, yeah, I mean, COVID year is what it is. I think I got a credit season, and then the next year was just Peace Squad the full year. So just a grind, man. And so then what ultimately happened? Uh, I got cut. Uh, surprisingly, in the my last year, got cut in like May or something like but that. How much are you at this point? How much are you still struggling with your back? So like after that season, I just like took like a month off fully, and then just was doing like I was going to do Pilates and just a lot of like no weight stuff, just trying to body weight whatever I can do. To but you sh- never had surgery. No, I just kind of I think just did enough to where I could maintain it. Or, but did you how, like how like? When you got cut, what percent were you, did you think? After the season, my back still hurt bad. Like, I had to, I mean, I told him that. I'm like. So you never got back to where you thought. Not during that before. season. No, yeah, not during that season. And then, yeah, so I think I got, like, two more shots after the season. Um, and then this off season came about, was on the team, and then that full year happened. And then next year happened. That was when Tyreek got traded, and then D-Rob was gone. Fucking everybody's gone. So I'm like, all right, this is this is it. This Here we is go. It. this is my time to finally get a chance. And then was told uh, I was doing a great job, like leading the guys, receivers. Like, I, who tells you that? I'm not gonna say names, but okay, was told that like being a good job, doing doing everything I could do. What was uh, their name? I'm not telling you. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I got cut the next morning. So I was pretty uh, confused, pissed off, and then say it with your eyes. Look at me. Oh. Yeah, so uh, so that happened, and then I think I was trying to figure out if the Chiefs would bring me back at any point. So was point. it like like one day they're telling you, great job, you're doing Literally, everything? Yeah, the next morning. The next morning. Yeah. So um, that's why you were so fucking surprised. Yeah, and that was like the first time I like, like, was like emotional about it. Just was cause... it the same person that told you that, or was it a different person that, that cut you? Or Yeah, different. 
Okay, so it was like the same person, like, hey, great job. No, yeah, okay. no. Um, so that How'd they cut you. You just, I mean, I was driving to work and called me and they said, just called you. Wasn't said come on in. And after and like, I right mean, there. I've been cut fucking seven times before that, so right. I'm like, all right, I, I know what's going on. So but like, I, but, but like, you're like you mother. Yeah, I, had, I mean, I was just caught off guard. So like, I was trying to call the old receiver coach G Lou and just try to see if uh, he knew what was going on and he had no idea. So. Uh, caught me off guard, but it is what it is. And then when tried out for the Giants uh, for their rookie mini camp, and I thought I did well. I mean, I thought I was making plays, but I just figured that they didn't want a thirty-year-old white receiver. So, so then you decided that was it. Yeah, I think we got. Uh, I talked to G. Lou a bunch, and was just like, "Can you try to figure out if they would bring me back at, in any case?" Um, so he, I mean, I don't know. I, might have talked to Beach or somebody, and a couple of weeks later was like, yeah, there. it doesn't seem like they would bring you back. So after that, I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to – I think I had – we just had our second daughter. No, our second daughter was – some. maybe we were moving into a house or some shit. You didn't want to go try to chase I didn't want to – no, I didn't want to run around the whole country to try to make it. Um, I mean, I've seen guys like that, and – I felt like I was still good enough to do that, but I'm like, it's too much on the family. Like, I've seen the guys that have to go to a different city, and they might get cut for after a week. Was it, thing. But was it hard to make that decision? Like, okay, I'm going to move on now. Uh, Somewhat. Like, I had a good relationship with Chicken and Pickle, um, with Dave and Kelly from there. Um, so I had a conversation with them, I think, like, in, like, February before I got cut. It was just like, if anything happens, would you guys have something for me? And – Thankfully, they did, so just hopped in with them, and I think that helped with uh, not really mourning, getting cut the last time. Just you got a job to do. And you had a backup plan. Yeah. And you got so, a family. Yeah, so I was that was my my thing was just hop into something else and figure it out as I go. And that's, So there was no injury settlement? There was no nothing when they cut you after that? It was just – Yeah, it was just done, so. So, do you, so, like, what about now with your back and everything else? Yeah, so there's there's ways that – you can get paid from, like, the NFL after football, but it's a weird point system. You have to hit, like, nine points or some shit, and it's, like, only only major, major injuries, like ACL, like, neck. Those are, like, four points apiece. Like, my back got me four points, and I think I had, like, something else that got me, like, one. So I had, like, five out of nine, but you don't get shit for that. So it's kind of bullshit. So nothing. Nothing. So uh, – Can't get nothing from the Chiefs, the NFL, nothing. Uh-uh. Got to hit that that threshold. That is bullshit, though. Yeah. And that's what's kind of – it's nice to have, like, I got vested, so, like, I have, like, all the retirement stuff and still have insurance and all that, but, like, the – Oh, so you get, like – so, like, what what is what is that – what do you get? I think like, you get, like, insurance for, like, as many credit seasons. So I have, like, five. So okay. I, you get still covered for five years after you're done. And then you just get all your benefits afterwards, so. Are you uh, – like you're obviously still in Kansas City, mm-hmm. you you've decided to raise your family in Kansas City. Yeah, because you love the community. I I imagine. Yeah, no, we. I mean, we love KC. Uh, great people, um, connections. You can't really beat being a former Chiefs guy. So, um, kind of can do mostly anything I want to do in Kansas City for free or know somebody or oh, something really? like that. Yeah, so that's why I enjoy it a lot. I mean, I you meet a lot of great people. Everybody wants to support good people and good place to raise your kids yeah great place out south out south is a great yeah, spot north come on up no so uh, yeah everything else like it was meg like i want to stay in kansas city she wants to live in cleveland oh, really? uh down the road just by her family which is understandable but um just right now i think best thing is staying here in town so are you is your do you are you bitter at all towards the chiefs uh at first kind of but i mean you you learn to just get over it. Like, it's business at the end of the day. Like, they got a job to do, and obviously it didn't hurt letting me go. Like, I thought at some points, I think that next season was when some of the receiver struggles were happening, and at that point I'm like, fuck, man, I feel like I could I yeah. be better than these guys. So, those – Did you ever, like, reach for the phone? or? I didn't really have that much pull, so I was – whatever. Um, yeah, no, nah, I mean, I felt like I could compete – still do all that stuff still um but didn't happen so it is what it is and it's business so and they won the super bowl so can't talk too much uh shit about it 
Is that why uh, you didn't try to defend Patrick Mahomes at uh, Monday Night Raw? Uh, no, sat, I just sat there I mean, while was, other people tried to defend wasn't him. Wasn't part of the skit, well. man. I'm not a. I don't, didn't look like a skit to me. You were just sitting there. I'm not a me people. guy. I'm not a me guy when it comes well, to. I don't. I, don't I, like I stick that. to the script, uh, yeah. so I don't want to mess anything up. What about big time and people at uh, Sporting Kansas City? Yeah, never happened. What about big time and me at uh, Arrowhead? Never that happened. It did happen. No, it's not. It did happen. Just because you text somebody like during the thing, like doesn't mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I left. Hey, er, I left early. Like you don't know when I was there. I could have been there for well, like I know five you, minutes. You were there. You texted me. I know, but like I was, I just left. Like, I'm like, not Nate. I just left right I'm after. Fun to hang out with. Listen, buddy. Fuck him. We're talking about me and you, buddy. I know this. All right. Listen, man. I'm. Sherm will tell you, like I'm. I'm too my. I do my own thing. I get in. I get out. Get in and get out. And that's it. Like when you invite uh, me and Sherm. To yeah. Watch Creighton. That's right. Uh, the NCAA tournament. Yes. You invite us there. Yep. And, then, and you leave at halftime. But I bought you food. Uh, you did, but I'm just like it's. You're, I'm not looking. Look at me. Do you think I need fucking food? I'm looking for yeah, I'm you looking do. for the brotherhood. Listen. I'm looking to hang out. Sometimes you just family matters, man. I, I, gotta, I got I got a wife and kids. I barely get away from them. I'm out there. I'm like, we're gonna watch some March Madness. We're gonna fucking Yeah, you got older kids up. though. We're bro. gonna gamble. Your we're kids gonna are older. Eat. We're gonna get after it. It's halftime. And you get up and I go, Where's he going? And sure was always leaving. I go, he's not leaving. He goes, Oh yeah, he's leaving. And you gone. Hey man, like I said, you didn't even see the second half of that game. Three young kids, man. That's you right. gotta, you gotta be able to get in and out, and this is what I do. What about? Uh, tell me about PickleCon because you were on the, you were on a panel. Yeah, uh, you look like Mister Pickleball up there. A lot of people up there. A lot of people watching that thing. You didn't uh, go to my? Did you see my? Did you see Dola White featuring my son on the bass? Played at the opening ceremony for PickleCon on that. I told you that. See, you act like I didn't tell you. They went to. They did the Just Paddles party. I don't know. I don't know. They were at Serve, weren't they? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, I didn't go to that. Okay. The, they had that Just Paddles party at Kaufman Center, which was pretty cool. Uh, that so you were, on a, uh, you were at, on a panel yeah. as an expert. Like, what are you fucking saying? It like, was, I love uh, pickleball. Look at this. It was how to how does professional sports translate over into pickleball, which they really don't. like cause you, you're, you lie to these people on this. No, I, I told them that. I'm like, at the end of the day, like, pickleball is different. Like, you got guys that – never played a sport in their life but can play pickleball at a high level it's like yeah does it help being athletic and run around yeah but but you've traveled and played at a high level yeah where's where's the ceiling for you as a pickleball player uh but don't don't just be honest with no, us for I, once i think if i put it in a lot of time uh i think i could make it on the pro level but i don't have that much time to be playing that much pickleball so what it is because of the kids yeah kids and working and how much do you love being a dad that's yeah that's what i enjoy i love being home and doing things with them and that's what's nice about kc there's a lot to do with kids nice parks get out enjoy it make memories i feel like you should have cussed more during this hour i told you had an opportunity for you to to open your heart and open your mind yeah Listen, I feel I'm, like you've held back. On I this told thing. you if if it's like uh, if I'm allowed to cuss, it's like not fun to cuss. You know what I mean? If I'm not allowed to cuss, then I'll be like, so we're right. gonna wrap this up. Say what you want to say about Sherm right now. Sherm's a great American. Uh, I love that guy. He's yeah. he's a patriot, uh, a great father, great husband, great guy. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like what is what is this? this <clears throat> I mean, is not I, what was I just expected. I just gave you. That's Sherm in a, in a nutshell, man. Do you, so we talked about WWE. You like playing the heel a little bit, don't you? I, I looked over when we had our new day at the K. Yeah. And people, you stood up, and people booed you because you had Yankees gear on, and yeah. it looked like you fed off of that. No, the Kansas City fans are great when it Loved comes it. to – I had just gotten some Twitter arguments last week about MVP. Um, and they're – like, I enjoy it. Like, it's all a place out of uh, – like, I, I just have fun with it. Like, I'm serious, but at the same time, like, it's – that's just how I – interact with people but yeah i mean kc kc fans are pretty passionate can we deal with the elephant in the room now yeah let's you go. know what we've been avoiding right no you know exactly what i'm talking about let's deal with your nephew and my daughter uh-huh. she really enjoyed meeting him okay he said her i guess they, they're friends on instagram okay and then uh she was furious the day you brought him in, his last day in Kansas City to the studio, because she was going to come in, and then she decided not to. And she didn't know he was going to be there. What's his name again? Joey. Joey. 
Joey from Cleveland, yeah. who you trained as a wide receiver, yep. who better, I mean, because we're going to check in on him. Yeah, I'm we'll not see. fucking kidding. He better put up big-time stats he's, after a month with you here. He's been Is sending you, me videos. Are you sure of that? I mean, he's been sending me highlights. It looks like he's doing pretty well. But, yeah, once the season starts and he kicks things off the right way, we'll see. It's all about coaching that. There was a, I'm, just, I'm just letting you, there was a hypothetical question put out there. Is like, if would he would he fly back to Kansas City for a homecoming dance? And I said, look, I don't fucking know about that. I'll just throw it to Uncle Dieter. I mean. I'll throw it to Uncle Gehrig and big, find out. Big Daddy Steven St. John buying flights and stuff. Like, I'm, I, mean, I don't know. He'd probably be down for it. I mean, I'm just asking, you know. He'd be down. You bless something like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't care what he does. she's listening. Right? What, do you, what do you mean you don't care what he does? I mean, listen, like, that's not my kid. Like, he's my nephew. But, so, it's like. How's he your nephew? So, it's Meg's. It's Meg's sister's. Kid. You don't you you care about him? Yeah, you care no, what he does. Should I had him here for a month? Fucking, and you had him cleaning your fucking house. It seems like I had him the videos are training, and yeah, for his payment, yeah, he's gonna fucking clean the house and make sure everything's in place. Will you train any other people out here? Are you do you train uh, <clears throat> receivers? Yeah, been training. Uh, five, six, six guys, six guys. What what age range will you train? They're all high school kids, but I'm enjoying uh, just kind of sharing fundamentals on. You see a lot of, like, the sexy training that happens on, like, Instagram and stuff. But yeah. none of those guys fucking play football at a high level. with the real shit. Yeah, I mean, like, you got to, like, all that stuff. Like, there's a reason you don't see, like, NFL coaches doing that type of thing. It's like, it doesn't work. So I just like to sh- kind of show out, like, fundamentals and how important doing the same thing is over and over and over again. Well, and, you, are you available? Do you want to put it out there? Or do you, will you train yeah, or man, no? Slide in my DMs, baby. Slide in the DMs. I, I, I don't think you need to ask high school students to slide in your DMs. It's it doesn't matter way. who it is, man. It, I mean, it might get fucking blocked. Like, Instagram's okay. kind of weird. They right. restrict a lot of people from Instagram or Twitter? What do you want? I'm not both, man. All right. Twitter's got a lot of scam artists, though, so watch and out. And you want to coach? Yeah, no. Put it out there to any high schools that are listening. Promote yeah. yourself on this show. If uh, if Sherman and myself could be a tandem at a high school, we would we would take it. But Sherman has to be the head coach, so. And what do you want to be? I'll be whatever else. OC. You don't have to be the OC. Could you be receivers coach, or do you want? To I'd be probably the OC? rather be like receiver and defense coordinator. Okay. Will you go Let's to a Pius game with me this boys. year? When's that first one? August thirtieth. August thirtieth. That Rockers. But once you go to a Pius home game, but wouldn't that Rockers one be? I don't know if they're ready for Rockers, but yeah, I mean, sure, we can go. But so they suck. No, they don't. Rockers is there. It's a bigger school. I want you to go to a St. Pius game. That shit's far, buddy. Like Sherman I'll and I fucking would come and get you. I mean, You're I'll fucking go. fucking rolling I'll... in the Northland, man. Wasn't Sherman supposed to show up and didn't show up last year? He had a baseball tournament at the last minute. Last minute. You think that's true? It's hard to tell with that guy. Are we going to Mizzou, Alabama? I think so. Like, what do you mean? Like, what do you think? I, mean, what, I haven't, what have t- you I haven't talked to my wife like? about it, but I could well, get That us... seems like a pretty important part of it. Yeah, that's probably the first step I need to take, but Guess what? I can get us tickets. And... I, haven't, I haven't talked to my wife either. Yeah, so that's... When is that, know. October 16th? I don't fucking know. Yeah, Bama, man. That would be a... Will we uh, drive or fly? What we, it was an 11-hour drive. Oh, I think it's longer than that. Fly. Okay. No way I'm driving that. Do I even research this, or is this? Or are you just fucking telling me this? Do, do, I, do I even... Should I even ask my wife? Oh. August, Will we even get that far? September, October. I don't know. I got to look at the we'll calendar. We'll talk about the year. We got we to gotta figure it out. Gary but. Dieter, this has been a great hour plus. Do you think that your podcast is better than Sherm's? Yeah, I think so. Why? Just I'm a, I'm a great young American man. Yeah. Well, there it is. There's Gary Dieter. You can listen to him every Thursday at 8 a.m. with Anthony Sherman on New Day with SSJ. And are you going to do – are you going to close with me a couple times? If the you, whole four if hours? You fucking invite us. Like, oh, we're just looking for an invite. Yeah, for last time I fucking invited you, you left at 9 o'clock and the show's over at 10. No, that's a different scenario. Well, why, why was that a different scenario? I can't remember what I had, but I think yeah, you I, had I had to tell you that I'm – just like right. the, or I just left. That's Gary Dieter. He cusses on 810, won't cuss on the podcast. But until uh, next episode, the microphone is off. <laughs> <laughs>